Larry Tai, author of Bobby Kennedy, The Making of a Liberal Icon, spoke at the Framingham Public Library. Tai detailed the life of the fallen icon. The lecture series is a partnership between Framingham State University and Framingham Public Library. Ty, longtime journalist with the Boston Globe, spoke to an audience about the life of the popular senator and candidate. Ty spoke of Kennedy's political persona as perceived by the public eye, his strife and resiliency in addressing the terms of a changing nation and the loss of the members of his family. He ended the lecture by taking questions from the enthusiastic crowd and signing copies of the biography. What happened to Bobby Kennedy? My guess is if I went around this room and talked to each of you, you are all some balance of toughness and tenderness. And the Bobby Kennedy of 1957, the dial was way over on the tough guy side in his Joe McCarthy days. After his brother's death, the dial for the rest of his life would start leaning to the tender side. He was somebody who had suffered through a loss and who needed to find a new sense of definition for himself. Martin Luther King has been shot and killed. Luger goes on to say, you will not, Bobby Kennedy, go in and give the speech that you were planning to give tonight in the middle of the black ghetto in Indianapolis. You won't do it because you might not come out alive, and you won't do it because my city will have a riot if you do it. And Bobby listened to that advice the way he had listened to Jack's advice on going to the funeral, and he did the same thing. He ignored it. He went into the ghetto. He jumps up on the back of a flatbed pickup truck, and he proceeds to read a speech that may have been a five-minute speech that may have been the most pitch-perfect speech a white politician has ever delivered in black America. He's of Washington and Chicago and lots of other places. A big chunk of the city burned down that night. There were only a couple cities in all of America that had any size uh, black population that didn't riot. And there was only one city where people actually went home and said a prayer for the country and for Martin Luther King. And that was Indianapolis. And the reason was Robert Francis Kennedy.